A large number of churches around the world claim to have the relics of a saint. While religious people don't often question these claims, scientists on the other hand are skeptical. Such was the case with some remains found in the Abbey of Santa Giustina in Padua, Italy. The Abbey claims that those remains, found in a richly adorned sarcophagus, belonged to none other than Saint Luke the Evangelist. Yes, the one who wrote one of the Gospels of the New Testament. But is that true? Well, it could very well be. Hello, and welcome to History in 7 Facts. Saint Luke is one of the four evangelists, the authors of the canonical Gospels. He is the author of both the Gospel of Luke and the Acts of the Apostles, which would mean Luke contributed over a quarter of the text of the New Testament, more than any other author. He is considered to be a saint, a significant figure of Christianity. Traditionally, it was believed that his remains lie in the Padovano Abbey. And from what we can tell, those remains did indeed belong to an old stout man. As he aged, his figure probably diminished as it happens in most cases. His bones were thin and fragile and he suffered from arthritis. His breathing wasn't great either. His ribs were curved in a way that suggests pulmonary emphysema. These remains have been sitting in a leaden tomb of the Santa Giustina Basilica since the year 1117 AD. For a long time, pilgrims came here to pray at the remains of who they thought to be the biblical figure of Saint Luke. Were they right? Are these indeed the remains of Saint Luke? Obviously, for the most devoted, such questions are irrelevant. This was a sacred object, the remains of a holy man. But skeptics often pointed out that these were nothing more than the remains of a man and that there is no proof of who it actually belonged to. However, both skeptics and the devout had their dispute cut short in 2001 when a group of scientists announced the results of their research. In all likelihood, these were indeed the remains of the author of nearly a quarter of the New Testament, the one and only Saint Luke, patron saint of physicians and artists. But how on earth could anyone know that? For Christian believers, this was nothing more than the confirmation of their beliefs. For the rest, this was a thrilling investigation. What do we actually know about Saint Luke? Well, he was born in the Roman Greek city of Antioch, today Antakya in modern-day Turkey. He was a physician by profession and a scholar. We know he wrote the Gospel of Luke and the Acts of the Apostles, the lengthiest and most detailed parts of the New Testament. He can thus be considered to be a chronicler of the earliest days of Christianity. He was later mentioned as Luke the Syrian from Antioch, although that could mean he was a Greek from Syria or perhaps even a Hellenic Jew. He was a travel companion and a disciple of Paul of Tarsus, known as Paul the Apostle, who taught the Gospel of Christ to the first century world of Asia Minor and Europe. This sums up the main things we know about him, but what did he write? Before we continue, I'd like to ask you something. This channel has no sponsors, so if you enjoy the content I make, please consider supporting these videos by becoming a patron. You can check out my Patreon page by clicking here or find the link in the description. Ok, now we can move on to the next fact. Saint Luke is the author of the third of the four canonical Gospels. It tells of the origins, birth, ministry, death, resurrection and ascension of Jesus Christ and is the longest and most detailed of the Gospels. The writing is beautiful and scholarly and contains many eyewitness accounts. These accounts were most likely collected by Luke himself. The most probable date for its composition is around the year 80 AD. He is believed to have been a martyr, reportedly having been hanged from an olive tree in Thebes in 84 AD. He was a devoted friend of Saint Paul and remained by his side until his martyrdom. Afterwards, he continued to travel and spread the teachings of Jesus Christ until he himself gave his life for his faith. He was buried in Thebes until his remains were moved. 
In 1992, the Greek Orthodox Church actually claimed the remains from Padua to be returned to Greece. But how did they get there in the first place? In 330 AD, the Church of the Holy Apostles was built in Constantinople. It was second in size and importance only to the Hagia Sophia among the great churches of the capital. Emperor Constantine intended to gather the remains of all the apostles while he intended to also be buried among them. He succeeded to move the relics of St. Andrew, Luke and Timothy in 356 AD. Fast forward one millennium and we get to despot George of Serbia who bought the relics from the Ottoman Sultan Murad II. After the Ottoman conquest of Bosnia, the kingdom's last queen, George's granddaughter Mary, who had brought the relics with her from Serbia as her dowry, sold them to the Venetian Republic. To make things a bit more complicated, the head of St. Luke was previously taken from Constantinople to Rome in the 16th century. That's one version. The other one is that in 1354 the head was moved by Charles IV of Bohemia from Padua to the St. Vitus Cathedral in Prague. So what really happened? Historical documents all claim that the remains from Padua were indeed those of St. Luke. But this is of course far from proving anything. Surprisingly, it was the Bishop of Padua, Antonio Matiazzo, who requested the help of scientists to determine whose relics these were. This was actually prompted by the request of the Greek Orthodox Church to return the relics to Greece. This brought about a scientific investigation of the relics in Padua, made by an international team. The tomb was last time opened in 1562, so this was truly a unique experience. The body they found belonged to a man, 1.6 meters in height, who died around the age of 85. And the skull was indeed missing. The deacon of the Prague Cathedral traveled to northern Italy with what they thought to be the skull of St. Luke. It was examined in detail and indeed it was found that the skull matched the atlas, the first of the cervical vertebra. The skull was also dolichocephalus, meaning it was an elongated skull, a feature typical to the Antioch population of the age. The teeth found in the tomb also matched perfectly with the skull. These teeth were then handed over to Guido Barbuyani, a geneticist at the Ferrara University, who compared the DNA extracted to those found in modern populations of Greece and Syria. The DNA matched the genetic markers found in Syrian populations. Pollen and dust was also found on the bones. These two were tested and were found to have come from the eastern Mediterranean region. Archaeological analysis of the tomb in Thebes and the reliquary of Padua, anatomical analysis of the remains, carbon-14 dating, comparisons with the skull of the evangelist located in Prague, all empirical evidence, confirmed that these were the remains of an individual of Syrian descent who died roughly in the correct era. The Bishop of Padua then delivered to Thebes the rib of St. Luke that was closest to his heart to be kept at his original tomb, a tomb which by the way fits perfectly with the sarcophagus found in Padua. We cannot definitively prove who this person was. All we can do is calculate probabilities. And this has a great probability of actually being the remains of a great biblical figure. I hope this video was interesting enough to have inspired you to look into it further on your own. If you liked it, leave a like and subscribe. You can leave your comments downstairs and you can also check out my Patreon page if you want to support me. The link is in the description. I hope to see you next time. Bye.